So the first episode of season two of Prehistoric Planet has been released today titled Islands. So I figured I'd do a little bit of a review of the episode. This will have like a little bit of like descriptions of the events that occur in the episode. So if that's what you consider spoilers and you want to avoid that, uh, then click away from this video right now. Without further ado, let's get started into it. This was a great start. This is this was a really good um, first episode for season two. It kind of feels like that they took everything uh, that everybody was kind of complaining about in the first season and, you know, basically did a little bit of patchwork and amplified the things that we really liked in the first season as well. Because I know one of the biggest complaints for the first season was that there there really weren't too many story aspects and you didn't get to spend enough time with each animal. And that's still kind of apparent here. It's mainly like a comparison to um, walking with dinosaurs where you're basically focused on uh, like a certain, certain, certain animal or certain era per per episode uh, whereas prehistoric planet kind of just like jumps all over the place with its inherent theme of the episode which of course this one is islands but it kind of feels like they spent a little bit more time to to breathe with each animal that they focused on like the zalmoxies getting stuck on a small raft and then you know finding another a female zalmoxies on a bigger raft eventually or the mating ritual between two Hatsigopterixes or things like that. It felt like there was a little bit more time for, for things to kind of breathe. Something that I also really liked in this episode is the kind of like cinematography that was used, things that help it feel like it was a, a wildlife documentary, like with different forms of cameras used, like the night vision camera for Madagascar, or the thermal camera for the uh, Imperibators, which I thought was really cool, like a little bit of a way to represent the, uh, how most dinosaurs are, are warm-blooded, and of course, presenting more dinosaurs in a cooler environment, which most people don't really think of. But of course, really the highlight for me in this episode was Simosuchus on Madagascar. I'm glad that we got a lot of time to really kind of focus on Madagascar, and it wasn't just for the dinosaurs. I mean, every time we go to Madagascar, it's always about Majungasaurus, which, fair enough, Majungasaurus is awesome, one of the coolest Abelisaurs out there, but... The there were other creatures that lived on Madagascar as well, and this put an emphasis on that. Like it had the snake, it had a little bit more focus on the mammals, which of course is always welcome because actually a lot of people don't even know that animals were alive during the Mesozoic, so things like that that are being introduced I think go a long way. But once again, the Simosuchus was the highlight for me, mainly because Simosuchus is my favorite crocodilomorph, and its portrayal was just incredible. I like how it was kind of built up with like some features that you might recognize on modern day crocodiles, you know, the, the distant relatives of Simosuchus, but then they reveal that it's primarily a vegetarian and it looks like this. <laughs> it was it was incredible. Sticking with Simosuchus, I really liked the sounds that they make. I liked the designs and when they were being hunted by the Majungasaurus, they actually go into a burrow, which, you know, that has been a topic for debate on whether or not Simosuchus did burrow. Prehistoric Planet obviously goes for the fact that they did. Just kind of use them as a little spot to kind of run and hide into and actually incorporated their armor like osteoderms into the whole burrowing system where they like they go in and they kind of hunker down and they, the, their armor protects them essentially which is really interesting um but the, like what i really want to focus on is the fact that one simosuchus failed to even make it into uh, a hole uh, quick enough before the Majungasaurus catches up to them and instead of just like getting eaten like how we see what happens to most small animals where they're just kind of like picked up right away it actually starts to defend itself uh, which of course that happens a lot in nature animals don't just kind of lie down and get eaten they're even if they can't escape you know in most situations then they're going to try to do everything they can to defend themselves and it starts kicking at it kind of like you know, and, and like I like the fact that the Majungasaurus is a little bit hesitant, which of course happens today because nobody wants to get hurt, you know. <laughs> but I, I really like that segment. Now, again, I think that everything was really well done in this episode. Of course, there is a fair amount of speculation, like the overall mating ritual between the Hatsigopterixes, 
but it was still really cool to see a lot of the stuff, see a little bit more of an emphasis on the island dwarfism, which I know a lot of folks were disappointed we didn't see a lot of in the first season, uh, especially with Hatsigopteryx being involved with the first season, but it has a bigger presence in this one and is definitely a force to be reckoned with, which of course, one of my biggest issues that I've always had with as dark and pterosaurs when they show up is that they're never actually portrayed as, you know, being these top predators. I mean, they do every so, so every once in a while. I know that Hatsigopteryx has almost always been portrayed as a force to be reckoned with, but it was really cool to see it like running on the ground and like in pursuit of the hadrosaurs. Um, something that's like really unique that we've never seen before and was again really cool to see here because of course that's pretty much how we assume that um, as dark and pterosaurs would do their hunting was primarily on the ground. They were 100% able to fly but it wasn't they weren't really capable of you know quick maneuvers like smaller pterosaurs would be able to so a, a ground-based hunting system does seem incredibly likely i really don't have i don't i have very few complaints for this first episode I, again i thought it was it was very good and at the very end of the episode they have the kind of informational um segment which was actually separate on the first season so i don't even think a lot of people knew about it but this one they just go straight into it and they kind of give a description about why we assume that Hatsigopteryx hunted that way and i like that because it brings a little bit more of the science to the forefront of some things that seem like speculation on the the um the actual episode because the episode presents itself like these dinosaurs are actually here all of these animals are actually here there's a there's a camera crew out there that's filming them as it actually happens so they don't really have any cutaways to like uh you know a paleontologist saying oh we think that this happened because of this they try to present it like it's actual fact and again a lot of it is actually speculation so bringing in that little segment to to at least focus on one one of those points and explain the actual science behind it um, does go a long way for the show. Um, I do wish there were a little bit more of that because, of, again, there's a lot of speculation overall with the whole show, but even the fact that it's even conclude, included in the first place does tell me that they do care about the actual science, and um, with a documentary, I think that that's accuracy, of course, is held to a higher standard. And I just think that they really, really killed it with this first episode. But yeah, I'm pretty late to get this video out. I do work a full-time job, so I'm, I have to wait all day before I can actually watch the episode, and then I have to get, then I get on my camera and actually record the video talking about it. But I plan on doing one of these for every single one of the episodes, and then I'll do a full series review, um, hopefully sometime next week, once it's uh, all said and done. Because I'm wanting to cover this show as much as possible, so expect a little review episode every every day this week um, regarding each of the episodes um, and kind of discussing it. Like, of course, I just barely saw the episode, so these are all my initial thoughts. Uh, completely unscripted, but I just definitely want to talk about it. But yeah, thanks for watching this video and have an awesome day.